The brand on a car might be Korean, American, German, or Japanese, or something else, but that might not say anything about where the car is built. Many car buyers don't especially care where their cars are made, but for some buyers, the car's country of origin matters, and some American buyers want to buy an American-made car. We're in such a culture now where you order stuff online, it shows up at your door the next day or two, and you don't really spend a lot of time thinking about where it's coming from. But actually, when we surveyed consumers through this pandemic, uh, we found that there's actually quite a Buy American undercurrent, um, particularly among car shoppers. There are no cars that are completely American made. A car with a German or Japanese name might be assembled in a factory in South Carolina Texas or Tennessee. Not all vehicles that might look like they're American made are necessarily American made, or that vehicles that could be assembled in America have a significant amount of foreign content in them. A car with an American brand name might be assembled in Mexico, Canada, or even as far away as India. Some Range Rovers, for example, have a transmission made by a German company in South Carolina that is then shipped to the UK before being shipped back to the US inside a finished vehicle. The global supply chain is extremely layered and complex. The government has three ways to measure content and label its origins, and only one of them is public. Where a car and its parts come from must be labeled under the US-Mexico-Canada Trade Agreement, which went into effect in 2020 and replaced the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA. The corporate average fuel economy standards enforced by the federal government also track automotive content and divide cars into foreign and domestic fleets. But the only way for the public to get information on a vehicle's country of origin is through a U.S. law called the American Automobile Labeling Act. It requires automakers to disclose where cars are made. The raw data are available directly from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration website. Some of the information can be found on the sticker called the Monroney affixed to the side of any new car on any dealer lot in America. So when you buy a vehicle on the sticker, it will say this vehicle was assembled in this plant, in this state, in this country. And it will say this much of the parts content came from the US and Canada. And then it will tell you the point of assembly of the engine and the transmission. Companies are required to disclose several things. The percentage of a vehicle's content that is made in the US or Canada. The names of any other countries that contribute 15% or more of the finished vehicle's parts and how much each contributes. The city, state, and country where final assembly takes place meaning the factory where the vehicle will be put together, and the country or countries where the engine and transmission are made. But there are several hitches here. The first is companies can lump the US and Canada together, so your American-made car could be entirely Canadian and still be considered entirely American. The raw data can only tell a consumer so much. For example, even if a car is assembled in the US, the profits might go to a foreign-owned company. But even cars with the same badge can be made in different factories in different countries. A Toyota CHR sold in the US can be built in Japan or in Turkey. A Honda Civic can be assembled in Canada, Japan, or the US. Until Honda shuttered its factory in Swindon, England in 2021, workers there assembled the Civic hatchback with an American-made engine and an American transmission. The Mini Cooper, for example, you think it's a quintessentially British car, and uh, some of them are made in the Netherlands uh, at a factory that they have in the Netherlands and shipped to the United States. Uh, the Dodge Challenger and the Dodge Charger, these are American muscle cars, but they're assembled in Canada and shipped to the US. To really know where a car is made, you have to go to the dealership and look at the sticker on the car. You can also look at the car's vehicle identification number. American vehicles will have a VIN that starts with a one, four, or five. 
Canadian vehicles start with a 2. Mexican vehicles start with a 3. Then there are alphanumeric characters for different countries, like J for Japan, K for Korea, or W or WMA for Germany, and so on. So the first digit is the country, the second ones are the manufacturer, the engine and the type and all of that stuff is all coded into your VIN. In some cases though, these VINs may not be accurate. In the case of Audi, one of their cars is not German, it's Mexican. And that surprises a lot of people. One of my colleagues has that car and you know, I said, hey, did you know that it's actually assembled in Mexico? And he didn't know it. And he sent me a picture of the sticker and, I said, and he said, yeah, you're right. It, there it is right there, assembled in Mexico. Uh, but for some reason, it's got a German VIN number. Um, and and I, I haven't been able to get an explanation for that. And some vehicles aren't required to include any information on their window stickers. The Labeling Act also doesn't cover any of the big pickup trucks. So, you know, the Ford 250. F-250 or the 2500 Ram um, are not covered by Labeling Act, so you don't know how American those are when you look at their stickers. To solve for these issues, various groups produce lists of what they consider to be the most American-made cars. These lists typically start with the AALA data, but try to account for some of these other factors. Frank Dubois at American University's COVID School of Business oversees one such list. Cars.com, an online resource and marketplace for car sales, also has a well-known and often cited index. These lists each have their own criteria. The American University list factors in where the manufacturer is headquartered and assumes most of its profits flow to its country of origin. Dubois also tries to separate the U.S. and Canadian content. One of the things that you'll see in my index compared to other indices is it's a little skewed in favor of the American vehicles or American headquartered vehicles. So you'll see the uh, Ford and the General, Motor pro General Motors products in there. You know, even though a Toyota might have more U.S. Canadian content in it, it's got a U.S. engine, U.S. assembly, U.S. transmission. By virtue of the fact that the research development is, part of it is being done offshore. If it's a Japanese vehicle that's, that's made in the U.S., I only give it 50% of the weight for R&D. So instead of 6%, of the value of the vehicle going to R&D, I only give it 3%. Uh, whereas an American-made vehicle, I assume all the R&D is taking place here in the United States, and all the profits are, are taking place, are staying here in the United States. So it's gonna get a higher rating at that point. Dubois and his graduate student assistants spend a fair amount of time visiting dealerships to look at the stickers on cars in order to get a lot of that country of origin information that might not be found on the NHTSA data list. For some trucks, for example, the gasoline engine might be made in the US, but the diesel engine might be made in, say, Thailand. The Cars.com index looks at the four factors on the Monroney sticker and adds a fifth, the size of the US manufacturing workforce. The group also disqualifies vehicles for any one of about six reasons. For example, it won't rank a car not yet on sale or set to be discontinued in the US. It will also leave out a vehicle it cannot find enough information on. About 90 cars meet the cars.com list criteria. We looked at a whole bunch of um, kind of vehicle identification number level data uh, for 2021 and found roughly 52% of vehicles sold in the United States uh, can claim domestic production. Um, that's gonna probably surprise a lot of people. The group has also found that that percentage has not changed much in recent years, despite announcements about investments in factories or downsizing. Because these two lists use different methods, they do not always agree. For 2021, American University's list says that the Ford Mustang GT with a manual transmission is the most American-made new car. The, the interesting th thing about that car is this is the first year the manual transmission is made in the USA. Uh, previous years, the manual transmission was actually made in China and put into the Ford Mustang. So that's a, a, a you know a, a significant change there, uh, which which propelled it into the number one spot. Cars.com calls the Tesla Model 3 the most American-made car. There's only one major automaker 
as far as companies doing business in the U.S. selling cars and trucks uh, that can claim fully 100% domestic production for its U.S. sales, and that's Tesla. Uh, Tesla obviously remains a very global automaker. They've got you know plant in Shanghai now. They're building one in Europe, so they, they obviously have plants across the globe. But as far as U.S. production uh, goes and U.S. sales goes, uh, they're the only one among many automakers we rated that can claim 100% production. However, the Tesla Model 3 is ranked second highest on the American University list, and the Ford Mustang is ranked second on the Cars.com list. Both vehicles are assembled in the US. All Ford Mustangs with internal combustion engines sold anywhere in the world are assembled in Flat Rock, Michigan, and all US sold Tesla Model 3s are made in Fremont, California. Both include a high percentage of American-made parts. About 80% of the world's EV battery processing and refining is done in China, and that, of course, makes up a large and crucial piece of every EV, including Teslas. An American badge does not mean American-made or even American final assembly. Tesla Model 3s sold outside the US might be made somewhere else. Elon Musk has been building factories in other countries for precisely that purpose. It is important to keep in mind that these indices are based on estimates. But there's no, you know, one methodology that is ever really going to be perfectly accurate because that would require a complete disassembly of the vehicle and then look at each little part and component and ask the question, where does that come from? And the further back in the supply chain one goes, the harder it gets. Final assembly is an important part of U.S production. Uh, I, I can't understate that. If a vehicle is assembled at a plant in the United States, uh, chances are the suppliers for some of the highly assembled parts that come to that plant, you know, we're talking seats and doors and stuff like that. Those typically are located within a certain radius. Um, you, you, but, you know, you go downstream from that and you get down to little things like the widgets and the, you know, rivets and stuff like that. You, you, you go all the way down to raw materials even, and those can spiral out really, really far away. A car can also rise or fall in these lists quite rapidly, within a single year. The Ford Ranger was number one on Dubois' list in 2020, but dropped to 16 for 2021, due to a higher percentage of Mexican content. Similar to the Cars.com results, the Center for Automotive Research found that in 2019, about 54% of the cars sold in the U.S. were made, at least mostly in the U.S., and 46% were imported. So then you look at where we get our imports and there's 46% of vehicles sold in the US are imported and um, like 25% of that, of, 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 all, of all vehicles sold come from Canada or Mexico. So most of our imports are coming from our USMCA trading partners. Um, and then there's just a tiny little wedge that comes from, you know, 10% from Japan, 5% uh, from South Korea, 2% from Germany, about 1% from the UK, and 4% from every other place on earth. When the American Automobile Labeling Act was enacted in 1992, cars were a lot simpler. There were simpler electronics, safety systems, and no hybrid or electric cars on the road. Tesla's extensive U.S. presence notwithstanding, one notable distinction is that many electric and hybrid vehicles tend to have lower U.S.-made parts percentages, primarily because there is not yet the manufacturing base for a lot of EV and hybrid parts in the U.S. The supply chain isn't here yet, um, so we don't have big battery plants cranking out cells and packs and modules um, and the quantities that are needed to supply battery electric vehicles, uh, but there is that's coming. In the short term, analysts like Dubois expect issues like the supply chain shortage to force companies to move production closer to home. We've disaggregated the supply chains as much as we have been able to, but under pandemic conditions, we suddenly find that maybe that wasn't such a good idea to disperse parts and components and subassembly manufacture to far-flung regions of the world because suddenly we've got, what, over 100 container ships backed up at the Port of Long Beach and, and, and LA and California. It is important to remember that even imported cars support jobs in the United States. You know, when we last looked at uh, government data, there's about 
800, 850,000 American jobs situated kind of making cars and making car parts. There's another 1.3 million jobs uh, supporting operations that sell those cars, so, you know, dealerships. Um, so you put it another way, I mean, you, if there's five jobs in the auto industry, two of them are building the car, but three of them are selling the car. So that, and, and, and even a vehicle that's entirely imported, that wouldn't have made the American Made Index in any circumstance, still supports that kind of bigger slice of the pie.